Let's go. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. I'm your host, David Horsager. Join me as I sit down with influential leaders from around the world to discuss why leaders and organizations fail, top tactics for high performance, and how you can become an even more trusted leader. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. It's David Horsager. I've got a special guest. He started out at HBO and a production assistant with HBO Sports, then uh, almost a decade at NBC Universal Media, and now he runs his own company, and it's all about this digital storytelling. He's an amazing photographer. I've seen his work. He's actually produced amazing photography on my last book, Trusted Leader. Please welcome to the show, John D'Amato. Thanks for being here, John. Thanks for having me, David. Appreciate it. So I'm talking to you today from your place in New York City, and it's a, it's a treat. We have uh, just were at a conference not too long ago together. But, you know, maybe give us just a, a, a taste of John. I know you write it to 13 blogs a month. You spend a lot of your day writing, even though you're also uh, photoing, you know, taking – it's not just taking pictures, really visual storytelling of of celebrities and others. But give us a give us a little two minute insight on John D'Amato. A two minute insight on John D'Amato. Well, once upon a time, I thought I was going to be shooting sports documentaries for a living. Then I thought I was going to work in sketch comedy. And the next thing you know, I end up photographing people like yourself, working with experts who serve other people in one way, shape, or form. And the whole objective of what I do is to make sure that I present the people that I photograph in a way that creates a connection with those that they serve in order to bring them into their world so that they can learn how this person can help get them from here to here. That's pretty much it. Yeah, you know, you become kind of a celebrity in our industry overnight. It seems like to me, where you're you're, you know, <laughs> taking videoing uh, or taking pictures of and photographing some of the greatest thought leaders in the world, and it's because I mean, you're you're incredibly good. I, I don't even sometimes know the difference of why this is better than this, but it does tell the story differently. It shows differently. What what does it mean? How do you differentiate yourself, kind of? from all the other photographers out there? Well, I stopped paying attention to what other photographers do a long time ago. And that's what helped me actually zone in on how, you know, I can bring out what I bring to the table. Um, But really the thing that I focus on is getting that connection and rapport with the person that's in front of the camera so that they're able to drop their guard and truly be themselves so that when they're revealing these expressions, this body language during whatever activities that we're photographing them doing, it feels very genuine and honest to them. Because at the end of the day, the whole goal of these images is to build relationships with the people that they serve. And if they're, you know, posing and faking it and, you know, standing in front of a private jet that they don't own or in front of a fleet of cars that they're renting and it's not really theirs and it's a bunch of crap, that's not the type of message that you're, you want to portray because there's no trust there. You can't build trust if you're faking it. So my whole thing is to be able to get on a granular level with these people in a way that I truly understand who they are, who they serve, what problems they solve, how they solve them, and why they do what they do. So you pre-work, like unlike a lot of, you know, a lot of people just have these photo shoots and have people come in, you do a lot of pre-work to get to know them. I know some of the things you've you've said is Here's what I want you to do. Show them what your day-to-day looks like. Show them how the sausage is made. Show yep. them at your best. Show them, you know, why you're the solution to their problem. Like what benefits you, you know, you showing your best, but the real you. There's a whole lot of what you talk about. And it's it's, you know, all around authenticity, which in our world builds trust. Tell us about how you how you do that. Well, the idea is to kind of figure out what their face, their facial expression, their body language looks like across the emotional spectrum. We don't want to just show off what we look like when we're celebrating wins. That's great. And that's a part of the story. We also want to show flattering images because if they're not flattering, the person's not going to use them. But what we also need to take into account is the fact 
that we need to see them across the emotional spectrum, including their vulnerabilities, because that's what creates connection with people. And by asking a lot of questions, you know, it's the TV producer in me. You can take me off the show, but I can't take my head out of the way that I create a process. So what I'm doing is really understanding what people's motivations are and how they react to certain things in their life. And those are those nuggets during our conversation, the strategy call beforehand that really clues me into to what they not only what they're doing in front of the camera, but where we're photographing the shots, what they're wearing, the expressions, the activities, all of these different things come into focus once this conversation um, uh, is going on. And I'm taking a ton of notes and creating the shot sheet and really understanding who I'm working with and how to communicate with them effectively in order to get all of that stuff out of them. Because I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people don't like being in front of the camera. So there's that piece too, you know, so the, the there's a lot of trust that has to be built during that strategy call between myself and the client before we even get into the whole work piece. So there's a lot going on. So just so everybody knows, in the show notes, trustedleadershow.com, we're going to put several of John's images. If uh, we'll, get, we'll get some of my friends that have been photographed and just show you the difference of John's images. And we're all going to, also going to put in the, the, some fo- photographs of my newest book, Trusted Leader, which is cool inside and tool color. And people don't often see that. And you noticed it. You made it come alive in a certain way. And many people commented on the way you photographed that book. Your book is so beautiful and it has so many cool visual elements, the tabs, the layout, the way you have the the, the title on the bottom of the page and just it, it in the red and the white. And I mean, it was it was fun. And the reason why I even came across it was the fact that, you know, you and I have several colleagues in common. And I'm like, who is this guy? First of all, I like him, number one, because of the videos that you were posting and talking to about the book. And I'm like, I'm just going to buy the damn book and I'm going to photograph it. I don't care because it just looks so cool. And I felt just a genuine, like, this guy's pretty cool. Let me see what's going on. And that's how it started. Well, I think this is really interesting. And this is kind of, we talk about transfer trust where I, it, it came back full circle where basically at first you gave us a gift. Now we've been thinking about, okay, who are we going to have photograph uh, me or our work next? And it comes back to, well, John. So I think that it's really interesting. You you reach out to people, you connect with them authentically, just like your work talks about. And I've heard of other people getting to know you in this exact way. What else would you say about, you know, for people out there that are listening and they want to build trust with their their audience. They don't want to be just this marketing-esque per, Maybe they are thought leaders, maybe they're experts, maybe they're CEOs, but they want to connect with their audience more authentically, what would you say, even as far as using images or otherwise? Well, when we're talking about connecting with an audience, it's never just about the visual. The story and the visual always need to work in concert with each other. And one of the ways that you can create that connection is by simply sharing your life beyond the work. It's not just about the work, because at the end of the day, when you're building relationships with people, they're not just hiring you for your brain, for your ability to make them a better person. They're hiring you because they can actually stomach being in a room with you for four hours and going through all of this heavy work and heavy lifting. And that's really what it's all about. And when it comes to the people that I serve, You know, I'm very cognizant of the fact that I put my personality in every piece of content that I post because I know I'm not for everyone. And that's cool. I want to give them the opportunity to know who I am and what the process and the dynamics of working with me is like. And you do that by sharing aspects of your life within your own voice. And that is what you know, draws people away, but it also brings the people that resonate with that style and approach and expertise and artistry. And then they come on in and they're not just my clients, they're my friends. And that's the really awesome part. That is tremendous. There's there's a lot to this ability to say no, knowing who you say yes to and who you say no to. How do you, how have you thought about that? Like, you know, who do you say no to? Well, when I first started, I said yes to everybody because I needed to keep the lights on. <laughs> But as we've gone along in time, um, I remember once I was on a call with a potential speaker 
uh, consultant type person. And it was a Zoom meeting with three of her uh, assistants. And the moment that this person came on, the expert came on and started berating the people that were on the screen that I had never met those other people. And I never met her. And I met one of her assistant and the other two. And just the way she was talking to him, I'm like, this is a no. And I never called them back. I went through the meeting. I was respectful, but that was it. You know what? It's interesting how you treat. So I think of a couple of ways people lose their audience, even since we talk about experts here. Um, how a speaker treats anybody from the audience is how they all feel. I once saw a magic show, big show, and the um, some assistant, you know, magic assistant forgot to put something on stage for the this magician. Big name, by the way, everybody would know it. And he was upset. I'm sure it's a big deal because, you know, the magic isn't going to look magical, <laughs> you know, without whatever prop was forgotten. But the way he said something to that assistant from that moment on, he lost the audience right then. How we treat, kind of how we treat the least of these, right? How you treat your own people, how you treat others. I I, I also, kind of going off here, but I, I, I thought about this at a, at a big event. I, I, I was keynoting and another just a bigger name speaker was was keynoting and they gave him a standing ovation and I watched him afterwards as he berated the sound team and I had I used to look up to this person and it 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 affected me so much this idea of being the same on stage and off stage, right? And so, um, anyway, that's interesting that you say that even in calls. It's a, it's a hard no. Hey, it's not just about the money. It's we got to be a fit here. And if we're going to treat people like that, that's not a fit in, in working with John. Hey, it's Anne with the Trust Edge team here. As you know, we are passionate about helping you and your team perform at your best, and that's why David wrote his new book, Trusted Leader. This true-to-life parable follows the story of a CEO who uncovers the root issue threatening his organization's success. And in the back half of the book, David provides a roadmap for even how to solve those road issues. Get Trusted Leader for your team, your organization, or even just for yourself at trustedleaderbook.com. You're a writer too. I mean, you, you know, you go back to your production days, certainly, but I mean, you have an amazing eye behind the camera. You have this way of getting to the core of humans to tell a story, but you're also a storyteller by giving so much to your writing. Tell us about your you know, what you're doing writing wise, 13 blogs a month and more, and just the process. Well, <clears throat> originally, uh, I hired a consultant, uh, four years ago. And uh, up until that time I was writing a blog a month and it was very, you know, five steps to do this before your photo session and this and that a lot of, you know, SEO out kind of keyworded kind of thing. And when I talked to him, like, why is nobody reading anything? And he's like, well, there's no you in this. You're not teaching a lesson through storytelling. You're basically parroting what everybody else is doing. And that really woke me up. He's like, you have all of these stories, all of these experiences. And what you need to do is translate that into content that's actually going to speak to people. And over the years, it's matured into an opportunity for me to kind of have a catharsis. You know, I, I don't just see writing as uh, these are perfect final pieces. You know, they're all money in the bank and they're all wonderful. What it really is, is akin to a stand up comedian doing a 15 minute set to warm up for their special, you know, their 60 minute hour special that they're going to record. I treat it as a workspace. I treat it as a place to be an extension of my art. I share my feelings. You know, I talk about a lot of vulnerable things on there because at the end of the day, you know, it's a lot more than just trying to get clicks. It's really about giving an education to the people that are in my ecosphere about who I am and who I serve and what problems do I solve and why do I do what I do? Because if I'm here waxing poetic to all of these expert speakers who are ultra successful and need these photos, and I'm telling them, you have to create these relationships with your audience. Well, if I'm not doing the same thing, then Where's my authenticity? Where's my, you know, where's the trust there? There is no trust there because I'm just telling people to do stuff and not walking my talk. So that's how I treat my writing. 
you know, there's a big piece of research. I I so appreciate that that shows the more trans. Ninety two percent of people would would. This is from our Trust Outlook Global study that ninety percent of people would trust their leader more if they were more transparent about their mistakes. In essence, not just how great they are, but but their their tough their their mistakes their these kind of things. You're dealing with a lot of high profile people high egos, certainly. And yet you are very authentic. You know, I've noticed even uh, social media wise, the last little bit here, you lost your dad, you've been very open about that. What's that process been like sharing with all these kind of, you know, leaders, some of them are very protected, and yet you're willing to share your life and this, this just kind of deep sadness and challenge of it. What, what, tell us about that as much as you'd like to. And we talked about this ahead of time, pre-talked about this. <laughs> so we can cut anything else you say here out in production, but I know you've been willing to share your life. Yeah, uh, and I, I do it intentionally. Um, the posts that I write, uh, also when my mother passed away in 2013, I did the same thing. Um, I, I write, th- those posts are ultimately, you know, I want to offer uh an opportunity for people to really know who I am and I'm open about it because really those posts are for me. Those posts are for me to kind of make sense of what's going on in my head because there's a lot of stuff going on right now. And for me to be able to kind of, you know, get grounded and kind of get back moving forward, I write about these things. But then the back of my mind is what's the teachable moment? What's the teachable moment? And then I find something. And and actually for the post that I wrote about my dad recently, um, I, I, I had a couple of versions and uh, um, at one point I wrote, so why am I even telling you all of this? Hold on, give me a hundred words and I'll figure it out. And then ultimately <laughs> the moment I wrote that, I was like, oh, I got the idea. And the idea, the, the, the lesson was if you run away from you, if you run away from your feelings, it's a race you're never going to win. Hmm. And, and that that's ultimately what I came up with that. But the point being is that ultimately I write those things just to kind of, kind of get past the feelings in myself, really. Mm-hmm. Right to learn. There's a one of the great books in college that, that I read was Right to Learn, how we learn so much by writing, right? Just yeah. when we write it it, it, it just like for me as an auditory learner, when I speak it out, I, I got to speak it out with my friends or my colleagues, this idea or thought, but the same thing can happen with writing it. You can learn so much just yeah. by writing it out and solidify or say, oh, I see that on paper. That's terrible. That's not where we should go. You, you know, when we're talking about strategic type of things. Speaking of that, what are you learning these days? What are you learning about storytelling? What are you learning in your space? We keep learning. What are you, what are you learning these days? Learning that the learning never ends and that... Um you know, just when you think that you've kind of figured it out, you quite haven't, because at the end of the day, everybody is so unique and so diverse. And and I think that is always the constant education. It's because the moment that I have a new client come into the, come in and, and start to work with me, I realize, you know, there are commonalities amongst many speakers, you know, there are, but there are also these unique wrinkles and nuances in people's personalities, the way to communicate, the way to get that effective uh, connection so that we can get what we need. And, and, and th- that education never stops. And that part is the challenge, but also the joy, because this is what I do. I love it. I love it so much. And it's just really entertaining, really interesting, challenging and fun. And ultimately helping these people get in front of those that need them the most. And that's what it's about. We talk about, you know, leaders, uh, great leaders often lead themselves well. And even though we're all imperfect and on a, a journey, it seems like you, you, you stay fit. You, you have a discipline of writing every day. What are your disciplines or routines that help you stay for the long haul on, on getting better? Well, I do some free writing uh, that has nothing to do with anything blog related. That helps. Uh, I do exercise several days. I just got off my exercise bike in the apartment because I was too lazy to go to the gym. Um, You know, I, I really try to be mindful of that. But overall, one of the things that helps me keep focused is minimize decision fatigue as much as humanly possible. That's why I own 30 black t-shirts. Seven of them have this, yeah, absolutely, my hashtag on it, but the rest of them are blank. Um, I eat 
I eat a uh, minimal diet. I fat intermittent fast as much as I can. I stay away from certain things uh, like added sugar and dairy and, and gluten and things like that. And it just keeps me kind of, like I said, minimizing all the extra stuff so that I can focus on the, on, on the things that are most important to me. What are your inputs for learning? Like you, you have a lot of outputs, you're rolling out words, both, you know, especially in writing and you're, you're, you're helping capture stories of people. What do you put in? Are you reading? Are you, uh, uh, listening to podcasts? What's, what's your, what's your input? I have a, a, a library of books that I photographed. And fortunately, I work with a lot of really smart, successful people. So a lot of it is conversations with them, reading their stuff, following them online. Uh, podcasts, a lot of what I uh, do with podcasts is that's kind of where my entertainment is. I listen to a lot of silly comedy podcasts just to kind of turn it off. But in terms of the education, it's really I, I'm really grateful for working with people uh, that really specialize in all of these areas. So I don't really have to go far to really learn some things. What's your, uh, what's your biggest hope for, for what's ahead? What do you hope for in the next few years as far as your work? You know, there's this thought in my mind that what I would really want is to be able to extend this conversation of creating this emotional connection and, and be able to, you know, be genuine and honest as an expert to present themselves honestly in front of their audience to build those relationships and trust. And what I would really love to do is have that conversation go on a much grander scale within the speaker expert community so that it becomes the, the prevailing wisdom in terms of how they do their job and how they get out there and how they bring people into their ecosystem. Do you see people that don't just don't seem authentic? Every they day. Just, yeah. I'm and a New so Yorker, what, man. I'm a New Yorker. Come on. <laughs> what do you do about them? Because I see, I, I see people like, like both in our world, like they're different on stage than they are off stage. So they yep. just spoke on success and then they're drunk at the bar afterwards. I mean, I'll yep. see, they, they talk about relationships and you find out they're divorced five times and you wonder, you know, I mean, it's just, there's an inauthenticity some places, but but also some people get in this kind of upfront look, but they kind of seem like they always have it. Like, what do you do with that as far as, you know, trying to tell a story that has any authenticity to it? Well, if they're not willing to be genuine and honest, I can't help them. I can't, you, you know, you can't force someone to do something they don't want to do. The only thing that you can hope for is that they have that moment in their mind where they realize that I'm full of crap. Everything doesn't feel right. I'm misaligned everywhere in my life. I need to get the track, the train on the tracks and, and move forward. And that's all you can hope for, because at the end of the day, you know, you can only hold someone's hand for so long until they actually start to realize it for themselves. And that's really it. So uh, just a couple more thoughts while I have you. One is anything you would recommend, you know, some people don't like the word marketing any more than they like selling, but in essence, this is what this is, but we just want to do it authentically. We want to build trust and connection with our people, but we do, if you, you know, care about, like in our case, we deeply passionately care about this trust work. And, I really had to have an epiphany. Like we kind of need to sell it. We kind of have to market it. If we want it to go around the world, if we feel called to it, which we do, then we have to get better at, in essence, for a long time, you know, we we're very fortunate with word of mouth and all these things, but but we we care about it too much. We need people to know about it. What would you, any recommendation for how do you get a message you care about it authentically out to the world in the right way? whether selling, marketing, or, you know, messaging, any, any tips or takeaways in that sure. regard? Because I think we're aligned on wanting to do it authentically and with value, right? So, Absolutely. you know, not well, cheesy, not, hey, buy, you know, here's for nine ninety five. dollars da, 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 you know, just. No, what I, what I would say to people is that, there, that there's two parts to this. It's the expertise piece. It's the value piece. It's the, I am the authority in my space, whatever that space is. You need to show people what the experience of working with you looks like. You need to show them what your life looks like. You need to show them what why you're doing all this stuff, what your hobbies look like, the family life, you know, th things, things that people can grab onto. But then you also have to show that you're a relatable, revealing, inspiring human being. 
So you have to, you know, the superstar aspect. So you're on stage, you're doing the workshops, you're doing the virtual talks, all these people. That's great. But then we also need to see the vulnerability of you, you know, living your life. And if you can bridge that gap between those two and have that more well-rounded scope of who you are as a human being and what drives you to show up in the world every day the way you do, that's what's going to connect with people. It'll connect deeply with some, it'll push the others away but it hyper-focuses you and it cuts through the noise that's on social and on the internet in general right now. Wow. Thank you, John. We got one last question. Before we get to it, where can people find out about you, your visual storytelling and photography, as well as what we should be reading that John's writing? Well, the easiest place to go is this really complicated URL, johndomato.com. And, um, from there, you can learn a little bit more about the visual storytelling process, all the different types of elements that go into the type of photography that experts need. And if you want to join, uh, sign up for the newsletter and get some information, save you the trip over to the website, you can uh, sign up on the website as well. Perfect. JohnDomato.com. We're going to, in the show notes, check out some of his photography. Of course, you can do that right on his site, but you got to take a look at how he captured the Trusted Leader book. Trusted Leader book, I should say, not the. Scrap the, just like Scrap the on Facebook, right? So uh, check that out. Check out the show notes. Check out John's site. It has been a treat to have you on. John, it's the Trusted Leader Show. Who's the leader you trust and why? I'll throw out a name that we both know. Phil Jones. One of the brightest, most generous human beings I know. And every word that comes out, I wish I had a pen and a pad writing it down every time he spoke. Love it. You know, Phil and I are on a, a, a very small, I guess people call it a mastermind group or something like that together. So we meet uh, commonly. Amazing guy. So um, yeah, Phil Jones. What a, what a, what a good one. I'm going to let him know by text right after that. You just said that. So (laughs) cool. of all the people in the world, Hey, it has been a treat to be with you, John. Thank you for uh, sharing this with the world. Thank you for becoming a friend. And uh, with that, that's the trusted leader show until next time. Stay trusted.